All right, guys, this video is going to be all about thread selection for tying streamers. Uh, and what I want to do is just go over thread characteristics that are beneficial for streamer fly tying. We're going to go over like roundness, build, bite, elasticity, and strength. Going to boil down all the thread selections, which are crazy confusing, into really only two threads that I use uh, in my daily tying. I'm going to bring it with Bramer's Custom Flies. Let's check it out. So long story short, uh, the thread that I use for probably 95% of my tying is Danville Fine Monofilament. That's six thousandths of an inch monofilament manufactured by Danville. So if you watched my videos for years past, you see me go through the progression of trying other tires recommendations. I've been in the GSP club, then the power thread, then the flat wax, then the Flymaster Plus, and finally mono. And then that mono had a slight journey going from eight thousandths down to six thousandths. And that is what I hold to be universally the greatest thread for tying streamers. So what makes mono so great? It's round, it's elastic, and it's strong. Now roundness kind of has two little subcategories to it which are going to be build and bite. Now build for the most part uh, is like a detestable quality for some reason in like nymph and, and dry fly tying. But in streamer tying, build is extremely important. When you have a thread that's round and you lay it across the hook shank, it doesn't lay fat, flat, but you get these ridge lines in your hook so that when you lay your thread base, you have a high friction surface with a lot of grip and grab to it materials can't slip at all. When you're tying with bucktail and you do your bulkhead hollow ties and you do your hollow ties and you reverse hollow ties, if you try to make those thread balls and those cone angles and try to control that with a flat thread, your flat thread will just slip down and slip down and slip down. You'll never be able to build any volume to it to control the hair. But a round thread will build up a nice solid ball, then you can stack it and it'll layer up and stack on top of itself and create a perfect little cone because it has build. Build is a good thing in streamer fly tying. And the second major quality is the bite. In the thread control video where I'm talking about spinning up your thread, People take flat threads for the most part and they spin them up to make them round. Flat threads are weak. You can break the individual strands and everything falls apart. But when you cord it up, you have to ask all of it to break at the same time. You get the maximum strength on the material and a round thread consolidates all the pressure. Instead of having the pressure distributed across this flat surface and trying to pull down really hard, that's garbage. But if I can make a really tight round it'll dig in and bite into the material and compress it, which is crazy important when working with hair, bucktail, belly hair, deer body hair, and either hackle stems. It's the bite that digs it into the hook and it's why I can tie bucktail in with five turns of thread because I'm using it at the right density and I compress it because I have a round thread that has a ton of bite. So on top of roundness, it's also elastic. In our thread control video on drawing a perfect circle with your bobbin nose and how important that is so you don't introduce slack, understand that the elasticity of the thread makes it more forgiving to tie with because your imperfections in your circle, if you're tying within the elasticity of that thread, you're pulling it taut, then any imperfections get eaten up by the elasticity instead of introducing slack. On top of that, it gives it bite onto the hook itself. So when I do a thread base with mono, I only need to put down like five turns and it can't slip. Whereas with GSP, you put down five turns and it'll pull right out. Right, So the elasticity allows it to bite into the steel, but it also makes it forgiving to tie with. And then last but not least is strength. Strength is obviously important for streamer tying because we're using large quantities of materials, coarse materials, stiff materials, and you're using these flies to target the biggest, baddest fish out there so that you need durability and that's gonna come through high pressure tension wrap so materials can't pull out, right? And so mono is strong. It's not as strong as say GSP, but relative to its size, six thousandths of an inch is about the best streamer thread out there. If you need to be competitive with GSP and you need to tie in coarser materials, I use eight thousandths of an inch mono. So monofilament in six thousandths and eight thousandths covers nearly 100% of my tying spectrum start to finish with the small exception of dubbing loops. Now a bonus tip with the mono, because it's round, you never need to introduce coil to the thread to get it to lay against your fingers. If it's in a neutral state, it'll come up under slack, nearly perfectly vertical, and you're never going to unwind it flat or rewind it round, because it's always round. So you never need to twist it to get more out of it. It's always at functional strength. So then in my dubbing loops, you're gonna see me use only two threads. And honestly, you could just use the one, but for whatever reason, I just 
like Danville. <laughs> so then I use 210 Danville Flymaster Plus and I use about 150 Vivas GSP. Those two I don't use for tying anymore. I just use them in the loop. And the GSP could honestly replace the Danville, but I just kind of like the Danville because I've used it so much in so many dubbing loops. I just am very in tune with how it's going to behave. So that is a familiarity choice, but the GSP has the greater strength, can be twisted up more durably and wound and tighter, right? So you can use the GSP, but I'm just ultra comfortable with the Danville. Now Danville, if you tie with it, it has more similar characteristics to mono. It's going to be elastic. It's semi-round, but it does need to be twisted if you want to get the max strength. Uh, it is elastic. It does have good bite, and it is waxed, so it does have better grip on materials than GSP. Now, GSP, in my opinion, is completely detestable. I absolutely hate tying with it. It's way too slippery. It's flat. It's stranded. It always needs to be spun. Uh, it has no bite on a hook whatsoever. I, I don't understand why people like it, aside from the fact that it's the strongest thread out there, which is why I use it in a very long, complex loop with a lot of coarse material. Like if I'm gonna do a bucktail, bulkhead, hollow fly dubbing loop on the fly, that's gonna be six inches long and packed with hundreds of fiber of, of bucktail. I need to be able to spin that so tight that it compresses all of the fibers to their core without snapping. And so GSP allows me to do that, but as far as a tying spectrum, I completely dislike it. Completely, because it's 100% opposite of all the favorable characteristics of monofilament. Last thing is just color choice. Mono comes in clear, so literally it goes with everything. When I tie with GSP, I always use white. I don't think thread color matters squat in the streamer game. I don't know why anybody cares. There should literally be like white and black. Everything else is pointless in my opinion, but mono cancels that out because it's clear, so it doesn't matter. So those are my thoughts on thread. Hope that helps you out, simplifies your selection and understanding why you're using, what you're using, and where to use it. Thanks, guys.